U.S. system of laboratory protection presents Rudy Valley with John Barrymore and our special guests, Marjorie Rambo and Phil Silver. I'll give you a smile for a smile, a song for a song for a while. I'll give you a heart for a moment sublime, right from the start. We'll have a grand time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rudy Valley welcoming you to another SEAL test program. Tonight, it's our pleasure to welcome the return of Miss Marjorie Rambeau and the radio debut of Phil Silvers. And so, with everybody vacation-minded, we pack our perennial pal, John Barrymore, in our broadcast bag and present a satire of the summer resorts. So off we go to Camp Aggravation in the Pines. You're not taking me to a summer camp. I'll do my aggravating right here. Oh, but, John, it'll do you good to get back in touch with nature. Didn't you ever roam through the great outdoors when you were a little boy? Ah, yes. What memories. (laughs) Blindful J. Stinky Barrymore. (laughs) Tripping through the fields, skipping over rocks, walking through the woods. Yes, and dodging dinosaurs. Never mind that. (laughs) Ah, yes, I can see little Johnny Barrymore now as he trips along. Blessings on me, little man. <laughs> Barefoot boy with cheeks of tan, with chin so firm and nose so pert. Wow, what a profile for a little squirt. <laughs> and Chad Zook, what a memory, through the courtesy of Whittier's Barefoot Boy. <laughs> uh, just what part do I play in tonight's masterpiece of the mountain? Your part, John, is that of an impoverished but distinguished guest whose name we use to attack the elite. Use my name? Never. I would never commercialize the name of Barrymore just to make a living. (laughs) Are you kidding? (laughs) Anyhow, at the moment, we're off for our summer camp, aggravation in the pines. Fill the woods with woodwind, gentlemen. (laughs) Put on your play clothes every day. Clothes, get your car and follow the signs. For there's never a dull moment at aggravation in the pine. Get out your golf clubs or you golf dubs. Swing a racket like Ellsworth Fine. For there's never a dull moment at aggravation in the pine. Your vacation will seem a recreational dream, even though your indoor sport. Why, even Barrymore takes a hike in spite of the snakes. He's the Daniel Boom of the summer resort. But here's what John did, our Don Juan did. He fell asleep where the poison ivy twines. Now we're sad cause the poison ivy's dying at Camp Aggravation in the Pines. In the high and mighty mountains on the shores of Gitche Gooney rests that rendezvous of breakdowns, aggravation in the pine. And on the veranda of this haven of happiness, we find the proprietress, Marjorie Rambo, holding a losing debate with a certain guest who, as usual, hasn't paid his bill. And furthermore, John Barrymore, you've been a guest at my hotel for three months, and you still owe me your bill. Bah, me owe a bill? John Barrymore never owed a bill in his life. Someone who doesn't read, uh, read the papers, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> you old magpie. You owe me a bill longer than a pelican's beak. Now pay up or get out. Very well, my dear. Now let's get down to facts. What paltry sum do I owe you for inhabiting that upholstered gopher hole <laughs> you so laughingly call the royal suite? How dare you call that gopher hole a royal suite? I, I mean, uh, are you going to pay me or ain't you? Now look, Miss Petty Lee Dove, at the moment I am without sufficient funds. Hope there are no creditors in front. After all, <laughs> you cannot squeeze blood out of a turnip, you know. Yes, I know you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. And do I look like a live turnip? No, you look like a dead beet. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, your lack of trust in me is most distressing. Are you inferring that I would accept your hospitality and sneak into the night without pain? You think that I, John... <sighs> Very more. Would we'll do, we we'll do a thing like that? Yes. 
Nine silver dollars for the lady in the balcony. <laughs> Well, be that as it may, when my son Rudolph returns from Croonus College, he'll throw you out in a manner to which you are accustomed. Rudolph will throw me out? <laughs> That's a hot one. <laughs> me evicted by crooning Rudy the campus cutie. Well, we'll soon see. <clears throat> Here comes my Rudolph now with his new snappy, super deluxe, convertible sports roadster. That horrible five-cent gas. <laughs> oh, Major, Major, here I am. A rally I am. Well, now, are you? And tell me, Rudolph, where did you get that beautiful wreck of an automobile? I bought it at the used car lot of the Smithsonian Institute. <laughs> and speaking of the Smithsonian Institute, I see you're still here, Mr. Barrymore. <laughs> now, look here, me blue neck fancier. <clears throat> Pipe down, Barrymore. Rudolph, my boy, I've been having an awful time trying to collect the, black, the back rent from this non-payer, no-good, no-account Barrymore. How much are you asking Mr. Barrymore for his rent? Well, about three times a day. <laughs> but it don't do no good, so I want you to help me throw him out. But, Mater, I can't throw out Mr. Barrymore. Really, I can't. I mean, uh, really, I can't. <laughs> you really can't. Well, why can't you? We must keep him here to attract the social set. Mr. Barrymore draws big people. Well, he draws big flies, too. <laughs> but you don't understand, Mater. You see, in my last semester, I met Cecily. Cecily? What's that? Cecily is a famous society deb. No doubt you've heard of Cecily Van Rappaport, the blue-blooded pet of the Bay Meadows set. <laughs> oh, ain't she the one who ran second in the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> Mater, that's an insult. But is Cecily the one whose picture I saw on your dresser? Yes, and she's not a horse. I'd get the opinion of a good veterinarian before I made so positive a statement. <laughs> oh, is that so? It may interest you to know that Cecily Van Rappaport is worth $10 million. That does interest me. <laughs> What's more, I love her. And she's not a horse. I don't blame you, my boy. I'd love her, too, even if she was a whore. <laughs> Sir, I resent your insinuation. I love Cecily because of what she is. Her money means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. Spoken like a man, but not like a valley. <laughs> well, I'll sing it like a valley. I'm going to court Miss Rappaport, because she is so genteel. She has an air of savoir-faire and money. When I escort Miss Rappaport, how apropos I feel. She has a mind that's so refined and the money. She's witty and she's kind and she's tender. They say that love is blind, so I hope he'll lend a helping hand to what I planned because I'm so in love and so in love with Miss Van Rappaport and her money. Noble sentiment, my son. But what's this got to do with not getting rid of Barrymore with the bill dodger? Well, you see, Cecily is coming to visit us with her society friends. And if Mr. Barrymore remains, don't you think he'll give our hotel a certain air? Well, confidentially, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm to be placed on your veranda and dangle as bait, am I? Bait? What am I, a fly? A grasshopper, a minnow, a worm. Very good. Four correct out of four. <laughs> now for the next question. Ah, an insult. I wouldn't stay here another minute. My room is atrocious and the service, phooey. <laughs> well, what's wrong with your service, phooey? I asked for the grand piano be placed in my room. And was a grand piano placed in my room? Nay. But you don't even know how to play a piano. I know, but I like to whittle. <laughs> I'll whittle you, you fugitive from a totem pole. Out of my way. I'm leaving for the hotel across the lake where health and happiness reign supreme. You, you don't, don't mean... Yes, I do mean. <laughs> I mean the Chateau de Pasudnia. <laughs> and poison ivy on the cliff. Step aside, I go to pack me pail and shovel. 
<laughs> oh, Mater, we can't let Mr. Barrymore leave here until Cecily and her society crowd arrive. Oh, what to do, what to do. Wait, I've got it, I've got it. If it's health and entertainment Barrymore wants, we'll give it to him. I'll wire the From Hunger Amusement Agency to send us Phil Silvers, the health and happiness kid. Who is Phil Silvers? Is he a good entertainer? Good. Why, Mater, he's marvelous. A great social director and physical instructor, and he's even a better singer than I am. Well, who ain't? <laughs> but, Mater, my voice has improved since last I sang. Listen. A summer's dawn, a fall farewell, a story sweet I dare to tell, a tinted sky, a trail to roam, a Speaking of resort hotels, did you ever stay at one of those little country inns where the food came fresh from the farm? Remember the cream, thick and golden, rich and flavorful? Remember how it made everything taste so much better? Well, you can have on your doorstep tomorrow morning cream that is just as thick and rich with all of its country fresh flavor intact and with its purity and wholesomeness assured by seal test laboratory supervision. Just put a note in your Seal Test milk bottle tonight for Seal Test Heavy Cream. Why not order a generous supply for the weekend and see how much this fine, sweet cream adds to your family's enjoyment? Serve it with chilled fruits and berries for breakfast or dessert. Pour it generously over crisp cereals and into fragrant coffee. Use it in soups and sauces, in custards and puddings. Whip it for luscious shortcakes. Top your salads and desserts with a shimmering mound of delicious, fresh whipped cream. See if you don't agree that cream makes the meal, that it gives a zest and sparkle which you can get in no other way. See if you don't agree, too, that nowhere at any time have you ever tasted finer cream than Seal Test Heavy Cream. So remember to put a note in your milk bottle tonight for golden, country-fresh Seal Test Heavy Cream. June is dairy month all over America. Use plenty of nutritious milk, cream, cottage cheese, butter, and, of course, ice cream. Seal Test dealers are featuring a thrilling new Plum Royale ice cream in the red, white, and gray Seal Test pint package all during June. In a few minutes, we'll tell you where to buy Seal Test dairy products in your community. <laughs> Getting back to camp aggravation in the pines, we find owner Marjorie Rambo and her son Rudolph awaiting the arrival of their new social director, Phil Health and Happiness Silver. What's that commotion down at the drive anyway? I think it's... Yes, yes it is. It's Phil Silver's, and he's brought his own band with him. Look at him, a picture of joy in his bell-bottom pants, his candy-striped blazer and his green hat with a turned-up brim. Here he comes now. Hello, Phil. Hello, Rudy. Okay, boys, give. Hello, hello, hello. We're gonna entertain you for a moment or two. Sing and dance, bring you before you go. We hope you like our little puppy show. You hear me screaming? Hope you like our little puppy show. I ask you, is that murder? In the first degree. <laughs> Mr. Silvers, I'd like to introduce you to a mater. Oh, how are you, tomato? 
please, Mr. Silvers, this is my mater. She owns Aggravation in the Pine. Ah, Mrs. Aggravation in the Pine. You have a wonderful place. <laughs> wonderful, glorious, what beauty, what air, what trees. What are we having for lunch? <laughs> Not so quick, Silvers. Remember, you were hired to be a social corrector and health destructor. Say no more, Tootsie. Tootsie, my footsie. How do I know you can handle this job? Have you ever done this work before? Have I ever done it before, she asks. My dear Miss Rambo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have been social director at 75 of the finest hotels in America. Do you mind? <laughs> and where do you see my athletic equipment? I bought six golf clubs, four tennis rackets, three baseball bats, two roller skates, and one dumbbell. Only one dumbbell? Don't worry, pal. She's bringing a friend for you. <laughs> wow! Get that material. I'll murder him. How do you like that, bud? Am I solid? Am I jiving? Am I hep? You're slip hep, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, yeah, slip <slept. laughs> <clears throat> Say, that's really a great gag, Valley. You know what we'll do? We'll do an act together. We'll team up. We'll be terrific. You and me. You mean you and I. All right, the three of us. <laughs> what makes you think we could be a team? Why, it's a natural. A natural? Yeah, a natural. Like four and three, like five and two, like a $12 suit with two pair of pants. $12 suit with two pair of pants? Yeah, with you, that's natural. <laughs> Never mind the rice crack in your natural chatterbox. Your job at this hotel is to keep a certain Mr. Barrymore from going to the Chateau Pascuniac. <laughs> now go on with you. Very good, madam. Come See on. you later. Come on, Phil. I'll take you to Mr. Barrymore's room. Duck your head and come in. Ceiling hmm. zero. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, this is John Barrymore. Is, uh, is this the man I'm supposed to make healthy? Yes. I want a raise. <laughs> Sally, who is this gamey zany? Mr. Barrymore, this gamey zany is Phil Silvers. We engaged him to keep you healthy and happy here. It's too late. I'll find me happiness elsewhere. But, Mr. Barrymore, it's my theory that a man can be happy, you mean, unless he's healthy. Mm. So I'm putting you on a health routine, you see. <laughs> Here's the sked. Well, first we get up at five o'clock in the morning. Stop right there. The only time I ever got up at five o'clock in the morning was to let Lionel in. <laughs> but, Mr. Barrymore, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. It does? Certainly. Now he tells me. <laughs> Proceed, Phil. Tell Mr. B more of your plan. Okay. Now, first you take a cold plunge, then a brisk canter, then four or five sets of tennis, then a short workout in the gym, box a few rounds, then some handball, then a climb up in the mountains, and then we'll have breakfast. Fine. Just have them serve it to me in my oxygen tent. <laughs> Say, how would you like to skip rope? You put a rope in my hands at your own risk. <laughs> now, gangway, you muscle-bound maniac. Wait a minute. Watch those names. That's open for debate. All right, let's debate. Well, what do you take, pro or con? I'll take pro. I had con last night and I lost. <laughs> you see, Mr. Barrymore, Phil and I are here to make you happy. And we're going to make you happy if it kills us. That would make me happy. <laughs> I got it. I know what'll make Mr. Barrymore happy. Come on, Rudolph, sing that happiness song, that smile song, you know? And I'll explain it to the little man. All right. I'll give you a smile. Get a load of that, Jack. Smile. Look what the kid's doing for you. He's giving you a smile. Giving it to you free. And from Valley, that ain't bad. <laughs> Sing on, Rudy. A song for a song. Get what Valley's doing for, for you, while. Barry. The kid's going to give you a song. Valley, who gets 6000 for a half a chorus, is going to give you a song. And just for a while, you don't have to keep it. That I like. <laughs> I'll give you a heart. You for did what's a happening, Jack. Sublime. The kid's going to give you a heart. And Barrymore, let's face it. You can use one. <laughs> right in the sun. Are you boots late, we'll brother? Have a grand Do you realize what's happening? Valley's gonna give you a grand time. Are you solid? You know what that means? Popcorn, peanuts, ice cream cone. Seal test ice cream cone. <laughs> Are you digging me, Fanta? <laughs> I'll give you a dream for your dream. See, see what Valley's gonna do? He's gonna take all your own dreams. My dream? They'll scare him to death. They'd scare me. <laughs> You'll make me a part of your... Don't you see? This wonderful kid has given you a grand time. Hearts, 
songs, dreams, and all he wants from you is a smile. Just a smile, that's all. He don't want any big laughs. He's not getting them. <laughs> happiness, Mr. Barrymore. That's what we're trying to bring you. Happiness. We want to hear those laughs rolling out. Goodness knows now is when people need a laugh. We got to keep our sense of humor. We all need a laugh. Uh, be merry. That's what we need. <laughs> Tell jokes. Be cheerful. <laughs> That's what we want, Mr. Barrymore. <laughs> we want you to be happy. Uh... <laughs> yes. Be happy. Like us. <laughs> I've never been so happy in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> they just say it to so Joe so he can all be happy together. <laughs> yes. Oh, you make me so happy. I'll give you a smile. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Say, what in the blazes is all this shedding tears about? That man underneath you says there's a drip in his room. Impossible Valley's here, madam. <laughs> I have great news for you, Mater. John Barrymore has agreed to stay at our hotel. He has, huh? Oh, oh, this is terrible. Look at this telegram that just came. Let me see it. Arriving tomorrow at party of 50. My Mater detests actors, so must insist Barrymore check out before we arrive. Signed, Cecily Van Rappaport. Why the nerve of that daffy dowager? Doesn't want any actors around. No actors. Then why should she object to Mr. Barrymore? <laughs> I'll show those blue bloods that can't kick me around. I'll stay in this hotel till I'm a hundred years old. A hundred years old? I'd better wire Cecily to postpone her visit till Mr. Barrymore's next birthday. <laughs> Now, a short pause for seal test identification. Here we go to all of those communities where seal test milk and ice cream are sold. Ready? Back in Camp Aggravation in the Pines, we find Rudolph Valley and his mother, Marjorie Rambo, discussing the main aggravation, J. Arrears Barrymore. Ah, oh, Mater, whatever are we to do? If I'm to marry Cecily Van Rappaport, we must get Mr. Barrymore out of this hotel before she arrives. Goodness knows I've tried everything to get rid of him. I even shut off the water so that he couldn't take a bath. What happened? He loved it. <laughs> Last night, Mater, I tried to disturb his sleep. I shined a big spotlight through the window right in his eyes. Did he sleep? No, the big ham stood up in bed all night and took bows. <laughs> Let's go to his room and see if we can't do something to make him leave. Squeeze in. Oh, it's you. Now what? Now look here, John Barrymore. Will you please get out of my hotel? Now please, I appeal to you as a man. You don't even appeal to me as a woman. <laughs> Mater, I have an idea. I'll scare him out. How? Oh. I'll sing him a love song. Ah, no! Anything but that. <laughs> yes, I will. I'll get you out by fair means or foul. Apparently you choose the latter, you inhuman fiend. Time and time again I whisper your name Time and time again It's always the same I see your face before me as always, but always in dreams. Time and time again, I hope and I pray the time will come again, and day after day. I'll hold you in my arms and see my dreams come true time and time.
them again with you. Time and time again, I hope and I pray, the time will come again when day after day, I'll hold you in my arms and see my dreams come I have another idea. It's the last long, desperate chance. Well, what is it, son? Why don't you marry Mr. Barrymore and take him away on a honeymoon? Ah, oh, that's poor death. <laughs> but, Mater, he's not so bad. Well, now that you mention it, he is kind of fascinating in a horrible sort of a way. <laughs> I'll try it, son. Thanks, Mater. I'll be waiting outside. <clears throat> ah, Mr. Barrymore, John, dear... Have I ever told you I consider you a very handsome man? So charming and so wonderful. Uh, I hope you've been happy here. Are you kidding? <laughs> you heckled me, insulted me, put itching powder in my shaving soap, tax on my floor, glue in my shoes, and now... And uh, now I'm asking you to marry me. No, that's carrying the torture too far. <laughs> ah, John, how will I remember that first day you came to my hotel, fresh from Hollywood? I didn't recognize you you in your dark glasses. Then you registered. And what a thrill I got when I turned the book around and read your name just as your own hand had written it. John Barrymore. <laughs> ah, yes. I do write a very distinctive hand. And I hadn't been here a week before you and I carved our initials on the big elm tree with two hearts and twine. Ah, yes. And then we each planted a kiss on the tree. Yes. So the next day, the tree died. Ah, <laughs> uh, John, you were so gallant. Remember that day I dropped my pocketbook in the mud? Not, you not only picked it up for me, but you insisted upon cleaning it. Inside and out. <laughs> ah, but all this happened two years ago. When we were both romantic youngsters. <laughs> now we're both old enough to know better. Yes, old enough to know better but too old to do better. <laughs> ah, why, John, we could be as happy as two buzzards. Don't you mean two doves? Well, I call them as I see them. <laughs> ah, John, dear, I can just imagine us married. Every morning we face each other across the breakfast table. <laughs> what a horrible thought. <laughs> ah, John, say that you'll marry me. And tonight at the stroke of midnight, I'll put a ladder up to your window and carry you down and we'll elope. But that's backwards. I'm supposed to put a ladder under your window and carry you down. Now, John, let's be practical. <laughs> I'll do the carrying. Ah, I wouldn't marry you if you were the last woman on earth. Ah, oh, John, dear, do I look like I was the last woman on earth? No, you look more like you were the first. <laughs> Nater, how did you make out with Mr. Barrymore? No soap. I've noticed that, too. <laughs> but how did you make out with him? He refuses to marry me. I'll fix that. Watch this. Nater, did those five oil wells of yours come in? Oil wells? Oil wells? Somebody say oil wells. Yes, someone said oil wells, you old geyser. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this, Marjorie, my little wild cat? But enough of this lovemaking. Let's get married. <laughs> John and I are looking forward to lots of fun as we step into the comedy bull ring for a frantic fight to a furioso finish with our last provoking guest, Misha Auer. Yes, the Seal Test Arena shall be filled with merry music and mad matadors. Until next Thursday, then, this is Rudy Valley saying au revoir. Hasta the way going, good night. Test Incorporated and its member companies are subsidiaries of the National Dairy Products Corporation. This is the National Broadcasting Company.